One option that Year 12 students have at Davenant is to complete an extended project qualification. The extended project qualification, or EPQ, runs during a student's Year 12, more or less. So students who do the EPQ will begin it uh, roughly in December of the Year 12, and it will continue through to October of the Year 13. There are four possible routes that you can take to do the EPQ. The first is the writing of a 5,000 word dissertation. This is the option that most people who do the EPQ choose. But you could also complete an investigation or field study, produce a performance or produce an artefact. If you produce the performance or the artefact, you need to accompany those items with a 1,000 word essay rationale. In a moment, I'm going to introduce you to Phoebe and Oliver, both of whom have done extended project dissertations over the last year. They're going to tell you some of their experiences of how they found the EPQ and also what they gained from it before I try and spell out to you some of the benefits of doing such a course. My EPQ question was, could human embryonic and induced pluripotent stem cells be used to cure type 1 diabetes? My question was, to what extent are animals conscious? Uh, and within this dissertation, I look at different theories of consciousness and their application to animals, as well as looking at independent uh, animal behavioural studies, as well as some philosophical arguments about if consciousness is directly related to biological systems or if it's something else. I enjoyed researching into the disease because I want to study biochemistry at university, and this gives me the opportunity to begin that a little bit early. I chose this topic because I'm really interested in zoology and it's something I want to go on to study in university and completing this EPQ gives you a valuable tool uh, on your CV when applying as it demonstrates how passionate you are about your subject and how dedicated you are. It goes into far more greater depth than your standard A-level biology course would offer. I also had to look at the ethical and religious uh, opposition to human embryonic stem cells as there is debate and different beliefs about if they should be used because of when personhood begins. Although it was something I'm really interested in and really enjoyed completing, it doesn't mean it was easy. There are many challenges uh, for me and for many of you. It will be the first university style essay you've written and this comes with uh, many new challenges that you won't have faced before, such as uh, writing proper academic citations, structuring a literature review and discussion, and analysing many different sources. It also gave me the skills of being able to look at literature and analyse the bits that are important and the bits which will help me prove my argument. It's important to pick something that interests you because if you don't, you're not going to be able to stay motivated throughout the entire EPQ. It's a very large piece of work and it's going to take you several months to complete it. So if you don't pick something that you're really interested by, you're not going to be able to keep up with a weekly schedule and it's not something you can leave to the last minute. I found it quite difficult to write the literature review because of how uh, scientific the papers were and how much detail they go into and deciding which bits were important and why not. Thankfully there's a really great support team from the staff. You'll have your own tutor assessor, uh, mine was Mr Midgley, and whenever I had a problem we promptly arranged a meeting and went through the entire essay talking about structure, uh, arguments, uh, even just bits of grammar, and uh, definitely benefited the overall essay. The big question that many students in your position will be asking about the EPQ is why on earth would you want to write a voluntary 5,000 plus words uh, for an EPQ? Well, here are some reasons for you. The first thing is it counts as an AS level, so you do get a qualification for, for doing it. It's not just randomly choosing to write uh, an extra 5K words. Secondly, you get the choice. So it's the first time really for many of you in your school careers that you will be able to choose to investigate something at a good level, um, at an academic level, something which is really interesting to you. And we've had all sorts of different topics chosen before by people doing the EPQ. Perhaps some of them might have done some something on a sport they're interested in or an area of geography or biology they're interested in, something to do with uh, astronomy astrophysics, loads of things we've had, several dissertations before now on, on time travel or inhabiting other planets, lots of things on uh, 
ethics of uh, you know, medical ethical topics like genetic engineering. There's all sorts of stuff that you can talk about. As long as you've got a debate, as long as you can find a debate, you can choose what you do your EPQ on. We give you supervision to do that. So you have a uh, whole cohort supervision from me. Uh, you also have uh, individual tutor assessors who guide you through the process of your EPQ. And another reason why you might want to do this is because for some people who do the EPQ, they're thinking of going on to top universities after they finish doing the, um, their A-levels. And uh, having an EPQ means that you've got an excellent material, excellent opportunity to discuss things at a university interview. Another reason would be that uh, actually probably more so than doing A-levels, there are a few better ways to prepare, prepare for higher education than doing an EPQ. And this is because of the level of independent learning that's required. Uh, lots of students who go on to university to do their studies there find that they are asked at interview about their EPQs. And several of our students who've entered Oxbridge in the last few years have spent the whole of their Oxbridge interview talking about their EPQ topic. Um, it just goes to show that it's something that universities are really interested in. Um, and everybody who goes to university is going to have A-levels. Not everybody who goes to university is going to have the experience of writing a 5,000 word um, independently researched dissertation. Another reason why you might want to do an EPQ as well is because you will be an expert in your chosen subject by the time you finish it. Um, and I often uh, really enjoy doing the EPQ tutor assessing myself because of the fact that I get to learn so much from the students uh, in my tuition. How does it work? Um, well, in theory, there are 120 what are called guided learning hours across the whole year. Um, so it sounds like a lot, but over the whole year, it's not actually that much, um, particularly because 80 of those are completely down to you. That only leaves 40 or so hours that you will be in my company or in the company of your tutor assessors. Um, so 80 of those hours for independent work in school, outside of school, in libraries, uh, making sure that you've got the resources that you need. And then 40 or so hours where you're being trained for your research and you're working for your independent individual EBQ supervisor, refining your project and preparing it for submission. What you have to do uh, at the start is you need to choose an area of interest. You need to then draft your title and uh, the aim of your project needs to be given formal approval uh, by the centre. That just means by the school and by, by me as the EPQ coordinator. And then what you will do is you will plan, research and carry out uh, the project. And you spend a lot of the time between December and probably March doing that um, before uh, you, you uh, continue with the discussion. You write your discussion uh, around about your year 12 mock exams. And then when you return to school for year 13 in September, October, you deliver a presentation to uh, an audience, sometimes of other EPQ candidates, um, also uh, we have been experimenting with uh, year 13 students delivering their presentations to the lower school as a way of inspiring those younger students uh, as they uh, learn how to do independent work as well themselves. The qualification also uh, consists in you showing evidence of all stages of the project development. Okay, And what that means is that you need to have all the documentation available to hand in which shows that you have been having a thought process along the way. In other words, what you submit at the end of your EPQ is not just a dissertation. It is a log of all your activities, where you went, who you spoke to, what you thought, what you did, um, really uh, illustrating almost like a diary, uh, of, like an academic diary of the process that you went to to get from the very start of the course to the end of it when the dissertation is written and the presentation is complete. That all needs handing in. Uh, as well at the end. So I guess the bottom line is this, if you were to qualify to do the EPQ, it would mean that you had done these things. You'd chosen a question and you had then submitted this form that you can see put there uh, to your EPQ um, tutor, which would, 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 be, would be me. And if you wanted any more information, of course, you would speak to me about it. The other proviso, of course, with qualifying to do the EPQ is uh, you remember that I said that the EPQ is um, it begins in December and goes through to October. Uh, 
The reason it begins in December is because we as a sixth form team want to be able to gauge how suitable you are as a candidate for doing the EPQ. We know that asking students to just do an extra 5,000 words on top of their A-level courses is a big ask. And sometimes there are students that feel as though they want to do that, and yet the grades they're getting in their uh, three A-level subjects uh, would, would tell us that it might not be the best idea to give you the extra work. So we want to wait until at least three months or so have elapsed of your A-level courses just to make sure that you are managing those A-level courses. If you're not managing with three A-level courses, you're unlikely to manage well with three A-level courses plus an EPQ. Um, so that's the other thing that needs to be there in the qualification. We will be checking um, that your progress check grades indicate that you would manage doing an EPQ. And if they don't, we might well say to you something like, uh, maybe it's best for you not to do an EPQ uh, on this occasion. Obviously, we'd say that very politely, uh, but it's first and foremost in our interest to make sure that students are able to manage the curricular A-levels that they have. OK, well, thank you very much for listening. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the presentations in today's uh, Virtual Orientation Day.